Yes, students, good morning. Today we are going to have a look at some principles on data pre-processing. Why do we need to pre-process a data? In fact, databases contains many issues, some of which includes obsolete uh, or redundant fields, missing values, outliers, unstable format, inconsistent values, and all these have to be solved before we go for our analysis. So the principle is to minimize gigo. That is, we want to minimize garbage that gets into the model in view of minimizing the garbage that the model gives out. There are some basic issues that must be solved in data preparation. You remember last week I showed you an example of an Excel file where there were so many issues. One of these issues, for example, included the date, which were in incorrect formatting. So this is an example of what we call data cleansing, which is required. There are also uh, cases where you need to apply data transformation. For example, if you want to apply a neural network, you cannot work with the data as it is, but you will have to apply, for example, what we call min-max normalization. There is also uh, the need for data imputation where there are missing values. By the way, I'm going to discuss that in a few minutes. And also, sometimes we also need to do data weighting and balancing. This is something that is required, especially if you want your data to be representative of a certain population generally. And we also need to do some data filtering at times. Why do we need to do data filtering? Because sometimes there are unwanted data. For example, let's suppose you want to do a study uh, among a certain age group within your data set when your data set contains so many uh, age uh, ages so what you have to do is do data filtering to select only those that age group which is relevant to you and also if you have some one or two outliers that you may wish to disregard you can also do data filtering to select only those data that you require by disregarding the outliers. And then you have also what we call data abstraction, which is generally applicable in the context of the time series data, where you select a subset of your time series data. There are other things that you can do in a preparation stage is to do data reduction. If your data set is very large in terms of a number of variables, you can do what we call dimensionality reduction by means of principal component analysis or factor analysis, for example. But you can also do data reduction in terms of records, all right? In terms of records, which means that, uh, for example, instead of using the old data set, I can use a random sample of a data set. This is generally something that is done at the stage of selecting your training and your testing set, just for information. In addition, there is also a need sometimes for data discretization. The data discretizations can also be related to data filtering, where you make selection of certain specific values within your data. For example, if you have a data set which consists of male and female, but you are interested in working only with uh, the male category, then you will do a data discretization. And then uh, the other issue that you might have to solve is in terms of application of data derivation. What is data derivation? It's about creating a new variable. Let's suppose you have a data set which talks about different factors of um, quality but you want to get an overall factor for an overall indication of quality, then you can create a new variable which gives you an overall indication of quality. Let us consider an example of a tiny data set as shown below where some problems have found their way into the data. 
For example, when you look at the data set, you will see there are some strange zip codes. You will see uh, at times very, there, are, there is a missing value for gender and issues arise like that within the data set. So what you are required to do is to identify issues within the data set and also propose solutions wherever possible uh, in groups of five, where you will be uh, posting your solution on Google Classroom and you will, you will note that I have uh, created an assignment called Data Cleaning Tiny Dataset. So you can post your uh, discussions within your groups on that assignment. Only one person will submit uh, the discussion of the all group. If ever you have any query on that, you are most welcome to ask me. We will look at data imputation and missing mechanism as of now. What is data imputation? It is basically filling blanks due to missing values in your data set. And you do that through a certain reasonable heuristic. What do I mean by that? Let's suppose in your data set, there is a variable called income and there are certain missing values in there. What you might wish to do is to generate random variates from a log normal distribution and these random variates that you have generated will be used to fill in those blanks. Now, it's very important though that you make the right assumption about the pattern of missingness which exists in the data. This is what I'm going to discuss in the forthcoming uh, minutes. If there is a strong pattern, for example, then the variables need to be removed from the model. You cannot use it. To illustrate the concept of missing mechanism, I'm going to use this patient data. It's going to be a reference uh, for us to understand the three different types of missing mechanism which exist in a data set. So what's going to happen is that at some point in time, I'm going to remove some of these records to illustrate these three different missing mechanisms which exist. So feel free to pause your video and come back to this slide as and when required. We will start by the assumption of MCAR. What is MCAR? It is the assumption of missing completely at random. This assumption is satisfied when the probability of missing values in one variable is unrelated to the value of the variable itself or to other values of any other variable. Let us take a look now at this example. You will observe in this data set uh, that there are four missing values. These four missing values, they are not related to the age and they are not related to the test result. What do I mean by that is that if you look carefully, we cannot say that there seems to be more missing values for a certain age. Or we cannot also say that we cannot also say that there seems to be certain missing values more for a specific type of test result, that is for a low value of test result or for a high value of test result. How do I know that? You will need to go and refer to the first uh, table, which I mentioned earlier. So based on this, we can say that the uh, missing values is unrelated to the value of variable itself, that is the test result, and it is also unrelated to other values of other variable, which is in this context age. So therefore, it looks like it is missing completely at random. But we can confirm that through certain probability calculations that I'm going to explain now. If we consider the previous table, you would observe that there are two missing values for 
H23 and two missing values for H75. What does this mean? This basically means that there are two observations out of four for H23 which are missing, and the same thing applies for H75. In other words, the probability of a test result missing for H23 is off, and this applies for H75 as well. If we look at the original data set, you will observe that there were four values which were less than 2000 and four values which were greater than 2000. Now, the choice of 2000 is arbitrary here. It is meant just to facilitate things to explain to you. And let's get back to this example. You will see that there are two missing values which are less than uh, 2000 and there are two missing values which are greater than 2000. How do I know that? Please refer to the original data set for, uh, for clarification. What does it mean? It means that the probability that the test result is missing, if the test result is less than or equal to 2000, is the same as the probability that the test result is missing if the test result is greater than 2000, which is basically off in both cases. In both cases, they are off. So, what is the conclusion of this particular probability computation? It means that the probability of missing values in the test result is unrelated to the value of the test result itself. So, what is the conclusion of what we have seen here? We have observed that this assumption has been satisfied, the assumption of MCAR is satisfied in this context, which means that the probability of missing values in the variable test result is unrelated to the value of the variable test result itself or to any other values of another variable, which is in our context, H. Now, let us have a look at the MAR assumption. The MAR assumption is the assumption of missing at random, also known as missing conditionally at random. What is it about? The probability of missing data on any P attribute does not depend on its own particular value, but on the values of other attributes. In fact, it is a weaker assumption of MCAR, which we discussed earlier. Now, let's have a look at an example of a MAR missing mechanism. When you look at this table, you will observe that there are two missing values in test result, which is related to H23. But when you look at H75, there are no missing values at all for test result. Now, when you, add in, when you look at that, it is quite obvious that there is a pattern in the missingness for test result. There is a higher probability of missing values for test result for a particular age than the other. In this context, it is age 23. So, it's not like the previous case where we observed that there was no relationship between the missingness of a variable with another variable. But now we observe that the missingness in a variable, which is test result, is related to another variable, which is age. Now we can compute some probabilities to be able to confirm what we are seeing. If you looked at the previous table, you would see that there are two missing values in test result for H23. This means that the probability for test result missing given H23 is 0 0.5, 2 out of 4. And when you look at test result missing given H75, you will see that the probability is 0. What does this mean? This means that the probability of a missing value on a test result depends on age, but it does not necessarily depend on its own particular value. Why? 
because if you look at uh, the previous table again, you would see that there were four values which were less than 2,000 and four values which were greater than 2,000. This means that uh, test result itself does not have any effect on the missing values. So what is the conclusion of, overall? The conclusion is that when you look at the pattern here, it is a missing at random pattern or missing conditionally at random. Now, let's have a look at the NMAR missing mechanism. It stands for not missing at random. What is it about? If the data, if the missing data depends on the values that are missing within the variable itself, it is considered as an MAR. It is in fact the worst case scenario. You can allow yourself to do imputation if your missing mechanism is MAR or MCAR. However, if the missing mechanism is not missing at random, then imputation is unshootable. Let us illustrate this concept of NMAR by means of this example. When you look at this table, you will observe that there are four missing values. And all the four missing values are val missing values which are above 2000. What does this imply? This clearly shows that the missing data depends on the values of test result. In other words, this implies that it is a not missing at random mechanism. We can illustrate that furthermore through uh, the probability computation. When we consider the uh, example that we just worked with, there were no missing values for which the test result was less than 2000. This implies that the probability that the test result is missing, given that the test result is less than 2000, is zero. However, this was not the case for values greater than 2000. All of them were missing. So the probability here would be equal to one. So what does this imply? This shows clearly that these two probabilities are not 0 0.5, which basically means that the missing data depends on the values of test result itself. And if this is the case, it means that it is a not missing at random mechanism. And for such mechanism, imputation cannot be carried out. So, it might happen that we will need to neglect this variable or find out more information on the missing values. Now, how do we handle these missing values? It all depends on the missing mechanism. If the data is NMAR, the variable itself may be disregarded for analysis. If it is MCAR or MAR, you may carry out with imputations or other methods. So missing values can be handled through, for example, deletion methods, through reasonable imputation methods, through model-based methods. Let us talk about the deletion methods. First, we have the list-wise or case-wise deletion which is also referred to as the complete case analysis. Such method can be applied as long as the percentage of missing data is not too large. It can also be applied if your data is MCAR. What is it about? Normally, through this method, you will delete a whole record or a whole case. The what you need to understand through this method is that you might lose a lot of information because you are deleting a whole record or case. Now, there is also another method that we refer to as the pairwise deletion or so known as available case analysis. 
This also can be applied if your data is MCAR. What is the difference between uh, pairwise and listwise? In listwise, you are deleting a old record, but in pairwise, you are deleting only the observation where uh, there is any missing values. This is implemented generally in models when you are applying them. Instead of applying the deletion method, we can apply the reason, some reasonable imputation methods. These include, for example, replacing the missing values with some constant specified by the analyst. Another one is about replacing the missing values with mean, mode, or median. The mean for numerical variables, as well as the median, the mode for the categorical variables. We can also apply, replace the missing values with a value generated at random from the variable distribution observed. If, for example, I want to um, replace missing values for income, I may wish to apply uh, a log normal distribution and generate random variates from this. These different methods are going to be uh, illustrated in the forthcoming uh, slides. Now let us illustrate these different concepts. We'll start by imputing with a constant. Let's have a look at this example. You will see that there are uh, many missing values for cylinders, cubic inches, and horsepower. What we are going to do is that we are going to replace these missing values by a constant first, and then we are going to replace these missing values by either the mean or the mode. And then we are going to replace these missing values by random variates generated by uh, the variable distribution. So these different slides will uh, be examples of how you can replace missing values. So I will leave it to you to uh, have a look and analyze it on your own. Instead of imputing by using a constant, you may wish to impute using model-based methods. If the data is MCAR or MAR, you may wish to 
apply multiple imputation or maximum likelihood estimate. Multiple imputation is like you are imputing on several data sets and in the end you are going to come up with what we call a pooled estimate of your model. Sometimes there are misclassifications in a data set. This also requires uh, involves data preparation. You remember last time I gave you an ex I showed to you an Excel file where uh, ambulance were written differently. So you would have had to uh, rewrite all these ambulance in only one way. This was an issue of misclassification. When you take a look at this example now, you will see that uh, here you have US and USA. They, these are the same things, but they are being counted as two different things. So in other words, USA should have been in US and US should have a count of 157. This also applies for France and Europe, where France have a count of one, and Europe has a count of uh, 46. So normally Europe should have had a count of 47 where France would be classified under Europe. So these are kinds of things that you may be required to do under data preparation. We have been studying how to deal with missing values. What about outliers? There are graphical methods that can be used to identify outliers. Now, outliers are extreme values that lie near the limits of a data range or go against the trend of the remaining data. It is important to identify outliers because they may represent errors in a data entry. The other thing is that certain statistical methods are sensitive to the presence of outliers and may deliver unstable results as well. Now, there are different methods, that is graphical methods, that can be used to identify outliers. Some of them are, for example, the histogram. Another one is the scatter plot. And we also have the box plot. One important aspect of data preparation is data transformation. Variables tend to have ranges that vary greatly from each other. Example, age and income. For some data mining algorithms such as neural network, such differences in the range will lead to a tendency for the variable with greater range, in our example, uh, income, to have an undue influence on the results. This is why normalization is important to standardize the scale of effect each variable has on the result. An example of a normalization is the min-max normalization. You also can apply another transformation, which is the z-score transformation. You can also apply the log transformation, among others. We have been looking at uh, graphical methods for identifying outliers. Now let's have a look at numerical methods for identifying outliers. The first one that is more relevant is the z-score transformation. For any value that goes below negative 3 or above 3, we can consider them as outliers because 99.9% .9 of values will lie within negative three and three from a normal distribution. So any values that go beyond three or below negative three can be therefore considered as an outlier here. However, it is important to note that the z-score standardization is itself affected by outliers because the computation of the z-score itself requires the uh, computation of mean and standard deviation, which themselves are affected by outliers. So to cope for this problem, we can make use of measures that we can derive from a box plot. For example, there is the lower fence 
and there is the upper fence. The lower fence can represent a lower boundary. For any value that goes below the lower fence, we will consider them as outliers. And for any value that goes above the upper fence, we will consider them as outliers as well. So this is a little bit about the different data preparation steps that are required in a data set. If ever you have any question, please do not hesitate to uh, let me know through your class representative.